Hello, my name is Mark Mothers Bob Devo. Jerry Casali of Devo, and you're watching Plus One TV.com. My name is Tyler Pollard. I'm the host of Timeline on PlusOneTV.com. We are about five minutes from interviewing Devo before their first concert in Boston in over 20 years. I think I'm going to be a little blown away. Energy Dome, yellow suits, I think. Devo. Are we not men? We are Devo. Are we not men? Devo. Are we not men? I kind of believe in the... Uh, the folk and the influence of rock and roll and music um, and the effect it has on children at random different times of fate and influence and uh, circumstance. Um, so that's kind of what the, the type of information I'd like to get from you guys. My father uh, was an amateur electronics uh, buff and he built a hi-fi, uh, a stereo, and he bought all these records, I think RCA put them out, that had hypodermic needles on it and it said injected with high fidelity. And so my memory of records was sitting in the middle of uh, stereo speakers while trains would go from one speaker to the next, or um, Harry Belafonte would have, the, conga, the, the congas and bongos would be over here, and the, and the bass and the uh, ukulele would be over here, and, and um, I kind of remember it because he was that he was always in it in from the technological standpoint. How about yourself? Well, I think, you know, music definitely has a primal power and influence. And I think as a kid, you're, you're very influenced by music, even subliminally. My parents had one of those uh, huge old wooden radios, floor models that rose up about three or four feet, you know, and my mother would tune it to a station during the day um, this is before I was starting to have to go to school and uh, she found some station where they played kind of like hillbilly music and I would just stand by the radio and uh, move to the beat like hold on to it and dance. I thought music was invented just to torture me when I was a kid like six or seven years old I started taking keyboard lessons and it was really a drag and it wasn't until I was 12 that I was the family was sitting around a dinner table and we, we had a little black and white TV set up somewhere so we could watch TV while we were eating dinner and the Beatles came on Ed Sullivan and I was like yes that's why I've been tortured for all these years with music so I could look so I could do that so I, so I spent my time trying to figure out how to do that next. I instantly went out and got some sheet music and my friend Ronnie Wyzinski who had an accordion came over so I my parents had a little spinet organ and he had an accordion we sat there and played together for about two weeks uh, sheet music from Hard Day's Night before I realized I'd spent my life learning the wrong instrument and I was totally depressed about it. <laughs> How about you? What was your first instrument? First instrument? Yeah. Uh, the same one that I have now. Bass. Went right to it. Why do you think that is? Uh, I was drawn right to the bass uh, immediately, even with early Elvis Presley songs. And then it, it only got more... Uh, um, reinforced by the Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. I have my own beliefs of where, where I th what I think the original meetings of Devo were like, but um, was there a, a musical direction that you wanted to, was that a, a specific layer of what you were doing that you had goals for the music of Devo, or is it just a matter of delivering the message and that rock and roll was there to help you do that? Well, you know, we weren't interested in, in following our influences and being uh, uh, reverent about that. He was Mr. Prog Rock, I was Mr. Blues. We weren't interested in doing anything except something totally original because our music was coming from concepts and then we'd find the music to make the concept work. All right. That, that's really interesting to me because that's, you know, that's a really hard thing to just kind of, you know, be focused on the idea and, and not be worried about, you know, well, that's not something that, you know, Bill Wyman would play right. or, that's right. you know. Exactly. And, and, but we kind of thought of ourselves as kind of like Flintstones meets the Jetsons in a way on what we were both bringing to it because I was into like electronics and that kind of end of it and he was more into like a really basic rhythm and um, and it was really complimentary. It was like chocolate and peanut butter. Is there any one band that you specifically think might have 
uh, helped you embrace, you know, doing a more visual application of music? Probably for me, it'd be Captain Beefheart mm-hmm. during the Trout Mask replica period because the music was so experimental and fearless. And so it was like, see, you don't have to sound like everybody else. You can make these things up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think when we heard Captain Beefheart, I remember as a kid thinking, oh, rock and roll's dead. There's something new now. I thought there was, I thought music was going a whole new direction. I thought Captain Beefheart was like the new Beatles in, in our world. He was. One of the things I admire most about you guys is that you have remained passionate about, you know, all kinds of artistic expression. And, uh, you know, that that's a really easy thing to lose sight of when you make music for your own, you know, reasons. Um, how, how do you think that you've maintained such a, uh, an energy for, for art? Well, we started that way before we made money from it, and then you kind of go away, quit making money from that, and you're still passionate about what you were passionate about before you made money. Imagine if there had been an internet when we showed up, what might have happened, what opportunity that would have given us to absolutely saturate and spread the ideas and the the sounds and the philosophy and the visuals. I mean, uh, we often think about that kind of envious uh, because it was, we had to do it the hard way, the kind of like grassroots, building blocks, do-it-yourself, little rascals version. And we were just looked upon, of course, as just totally weird and sci-fi and too heavy to understand. And and now, uh, you know, clearly what's what happened is those songs just sound like of their time, no longer ahead of their time, but the times did devolve so badly that... The, the style of music that we made in terms of the way pieces fit together and the lyrics, what the words were about, seem contemporary. I think that's why there's a new audience today of 18-year-olds that can relate. And the message that Devo was about was always, uh, ironically, it was was actually pretty positive because we were always pro-information and we were anti-stupidity if we were anti-anything. Anti-conformity, anti-stupidity. And I think, um, I think you know, the messages in our songs still resonate with kids. We've been talking, of course, to uh, Gerald and uh, Mark from Devo. Thank you guys so much for your time, and have a good show tonight. We warned you about de-evolution, and it came true. Sorry, de-evolution is real.